Hello viewers, thanks a lot for joining today. Today we have Dhananjay with us. So Dhananjay uh, is, has completed his Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering from Gujarat Technological University and then he, is, uh, uh, he has completed his Masters of Engineering from Industrial Engineering from Concordia University. So um, today we will uh, learn his experience um, of uh, joining the university and how the education curriculum of the university shaped his career. Hello Dhananjay, thanks for joining. Hi Venkatesh, hello, thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Thanks for the opportunity Venkatesh. Right. Hello everyone. Though I gave you a little introduction about you Dhananjay, I would love uh, you to introduce about yourself uh, to the viewers. So uh, hello everyone, uh, as Venkatesh mentioned, my name is uh, Dhananjay Nayak. Um, currently, I am in Montreal. Uh, I am. I've done. I'm doing my. I've not completed, but I've. I'm. I'm in pursuing my masters in engineering, in uh, industrial engineering, uh, in general stream from Concordia University, Montreal. Uh, prior to this, I was uh, working at an automotive OEM giant in India called uh, Morris Garages India, MG Motors India. So I was working there as a technology, uh, as a technical project uh, uh, manager in the manufacturing engineering department. Uh, my area of specialization was uh, stamping and body metal body work for the new product launches and setting up the whole uh, manufacturing and looking after the manufacturing feasibility of the plant and business side of uh, the company. I worked there uh, at MG Motors for three years, uh, ranging uh, being a project, a project manager for uh, products ranging from like MG Hector, MG Aster, MG ZS EV, and MG Gloucesters. MG Gloucester. So that was the full product portfolio I had been looking uh, there at MG Motors. Uh, before that, I did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering uh, in the year 2019 uh, from Gujarat Technical University, and uh, after that. I mean, uh, just after that, I joined MG Motors uh, after, as in my campus recruitment. Uh, my professional uh, inclination is more towards digitization and project management and solving numerous complex projects, uh, ranging from product to project, being in aviation, automobile, or transportation, and any domain. Complex. I love solving complex and being a part of a complex project. And uh, my hobbies, if I talk about, I'm a, I'm a very uh, sports oriented and a music oriented uh, guy. So that was about me. And currently, I'm uh, at the moment I'm interning with Pratt and Whitney Canada uh, in the business uh, integration and development team as a business process optimization intern. Right. Great. Thank you, Dhananjay, for sharing the information. And uh, this is a question like um, I've seen like many people who do mechanical engineering from India naturally uh, seems to choose industrial engineering for their masters. And uh, could you please give uh, your thoughts uh, when you have to choose um, uh, compared to multiple streams? Why industrial engineering? What were your thoughts when you chose this particular field? Uh, so basically, that's a very uh, very legitimate question, Venkatesh, and that that this question crosses everyone minds uh, who so ever wants to pursue masters uh, in industrial so basically when you do your mechanical engineering there are not a lot of um, streams that you can master in first of all in mechanical engineering then in industrial then in automation then you can go in uh, i mean autom robotics also so when we do our mechanical engineering we have a part of our bachelor's where we study about operational research that includes a uh, theory of operational research a uh, lot a bit of logistics a bit of scheduling sequencing a bit of supply chain and that is what industrial engineering is so currently or, or as a whole in generic speaking industrial engineering gives you a specialization in three major domains that is first supply chain second lean system and third is um, operational research uh, so lean system is lean manufacturing 5s kaizen kanban uh, all those uh, lean management uh, terms and how to apply it uh, on industry second um, what i taught, uh, talked about was its supply chain so supply chain talks about all the logistic networks decision models all the optimization route vehicle routing inventory management and all those things in supply chain and the third is operational uh, research uh, so operational research um, is basically more on theory side so that is more on research based like operations research systematic um, optimization and of how the theory of uh, optimization in industrial engineering work so basically when you think of what i thought of doing why i thought of doing industrial engineering was uh, to have an, a generic 
or i mean i was having a specific master uh, my mechanical background and i was working in an automotive industry where i understood that the uh, the world is moving towards more and more industrial oriented uh, domain with which is catapulted by data or uh, technology or ai as we say now so this domain had a very um, first of all it had a very good uh, professional uh, um, opportunities i must say it had a very good uh, exposure because you get to know about all industries because this specific industrial engineering is not very confined to metal or i mean fast moving aviation transport it goes to every everywhere you need industrial engineers so that was my uh, my thought process and my intent and uh, to why to do industrial engineering as my chosen streams of masters great so um, when you uh, chose this particular masters field you would have researched so many universities uh, mm-hmm. offering these courses and how did you um, uh, zero on concordia university yeah so that's a very legitimate question again i mean uh, where i was when i was doing my benchmarking and apple to apple comparison of different universities for where i have to do my masters from uh, i came upon um, a bunch of universities not many universities give this specialization but yeah a bunch of uh, of those uh, do in canada so for to name a few university of toronto gives that uh, dalhousie uh, university of windsor and concordia university are uh, to name a few they give a masters from a university in industrial engineering i mean there are many colleges who give in supply chain and all but industrial engineering as a whole and a degree from a university is just given by these four or five um, universities talking about university of toronto uh, it is the same curriculum as uh, in concordia but but the only thing that was differentiating was the amount the financials it's it's a let's it's a, let's all accept it it's a very costly uh, university so that's where i was that's one of the domain where because of which i couldn't go in delhousy uh, i i am not so now i'm when i'm talking about this university i'm not telling that these universities are bad but see delhousy has an uh, uh it has an a geographical disadvantage it is not in the heart of a industry or you know more industry oriented uh, places so there uh, people do get a bit of uh, disadvantage or a lower hand when you study from delhousie university so that that's why i rejected it it's a very it's a very far off province and that's why i i thought of like the main objective of me doing an and an masters was to have more exposure or global exposure so that's the whole point was not uh, there university of windsor i didn't want to go because i uh, i mean uh, number one uh, it was um, also in the heart of the industries but still i had some speculations or uh, kind of in, uh, in speculations about the universities just because of that and the reason when i where i uh, came to pick point uh, concordia was like three main reasons one was it was like it is one of the most financially economical uh, universities in whole of canada like you get to do your masters in a very cheap price second it's in a hub of the industrial uh, it's an industrial epicenter montreal is home of every big company you know like every big company and third is the very diverse and a very uh, vibrant uh, city of montreal itself so these were the three reasons and concordia has a very diverse uh, student base with good research background and good uh, uh, the the turnout rate the internship turnout rate the final opportunity turnout rate is quite high in compared to the other universities so that was the reason i chose Con- concordia to do my masters yeah okay since you mentioned about the uh, finance aspect of choosing the concordia university i would like to know if masters uh, when uh, offers were given uh, do they also provide any scholarships for the yeah there are a lot of scholarships in concordia so you automatically for example you are automatically enrolled for the admission scholarship that is uh, taken in by the university i happened to be a part of the beauty of uh, the very dynamic uh, alumni uh, team which used to raise funds for these kinds of scholarship and bursaries we have a lot of scholarships lot of bursaries just to give you a ballpark estimate we give about uh, 25 like 2 lakh 50000 canadian dollars just in scholarship in a year so that's the ballpark uh, 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 estimate that can i give you like it's 250 Canadian thousand Canadian dollars. That's a lot. Uh, so that's the amount of scholarship uh, Concordia gives. It ranges from bursaries to technical awards to uh, companies giving scholarships, 
which is in tie up with concordia to alumni's donating engine then that has used in bursaries so yeah concordia does give you a lot of scholarships it's just the uh, matter of eye and intent that the student must have and to look out for what the scholarship right the student has to so is the scholarships given during the time of uh, giving the offer letter itself or the student has to apply separately after receiving the offer letter and paying the initial deposit or how does this work out so when you have uh, accepted the admit uh, for concordia you are automatically enrolled for the inaugural or the admission uh, level scholarship that is some one of the scholarship where you don't have to apply from external source mm -hmm. uh, but there are many scholarships in bursaries when you start your studies at concordia you would be getting timely mails mm -hmm. so there are research scholarships and also that you have to apply for the scholarship and you will get it if you are your your profile stands out but yeah for the admission so there is a there is a big uh, admission scholarship that you are automatically enrolled once you uh, accept the offer and receive the admit so that's one and then you ha you have to apply for every other scholarship but you do get timely mails and from the department and from your faculty advisors that you know this scholarship is open this is eligibility if you want this is a deadline if you want to apply for it apply and then who knows right so is the admission scholarship is something that everyone uh, gets uh, some amount of money as they are no it's it's not like that okay. uh, admission scholarship is a very limited number of scholarships so if your profile stands out and the university thinks that you should be awarded an admission uh, scholarship mm -hmm. uh, if you're working on a very because if you, for example i'll wanna, uh, i'll give you a small example a friend of mine got an admission scholarship who was working in the field of research in ai but his research in ai was in the development of healthcare in rural india so there he, he did a research in bachelor then he had work so they thought that this is somewhere he can catapult his research more into so they gave him a admission scholarship so that's kind of if your profile stands out you'll get a admission scholarship yeah right now coming back to a question of your uh, past experience helping to get admission into this particular university how can you relate your experience in india after completing mechanical engineering helped you to get admission into this particular course in this particular university so i would be uh, it would be just totally wrong if i deny the fact that my experience didn't help me it did help me 110% the experience i gained in 3 years working with morris garages uh, india was immense was fruitful that made me a man that i am today because in terms of professional growth so uh, when i wrote my sop and got a letter of reference for concordia and the different universities i applied to the the technical abilities or the in the sop the experience what i wrote and what i learned in mg was in was i would say crucial and uh, very beneficial for me getting an admit from these uh, prestigious universities so yeah my uh, to just to sum it up my experience in india did help a lot in getting an admission and i would recommend like i would recommend the students who are watching this to have a handful of years of experience in india then to think of moving to of doing masters because always experience counts um, i mean it counts in terms of everything internship job and the the kind of professional you would become right so since we touched upon this sop yeah. can you please give some idea on the admission process before how many months should one start giving their exams and how this process goes of getting that mission so ideally i i started 10 months back why i say 10 months because if you want to do it hassle free without any tens i mean without getting scared of the deadlines of the you know visa because nowadays we also know the visa process is taking a bit long there is a lot of backlog i would recommend to start it 10 months back give your ielts 10 or any you know qualifying exam 10 months back and then you would be easily you know when i mean on the side if you are doing something uh, working or something you would be easily able to just uh, go through ho the whole process without you know running around in the last 11th hour so 10 months should be a very good uh, bracket or very good cushion time it also gives you a cushion time if you for example if a visa gets rejected you ha you have a amount of time left with you to reapply and read in state of what you have done and think thought think on uh, what went wrong so 10 months should be a very ideal time that's what i used right great so uh, can you give some idea on the uh, course structure 
of uh, okay. program of the program so, itself as an overall yeah. so basically industrial engineering has three streams as i mentioned so i am and also it is divided into two uh, uh, two domains so first is course based and second is um uh, sorry i forgot okay the first is course based second is theory based so m engineering m e n g is one that is course based and m a s c is masters in applied science is one that is more research based mm, so based. in yeah thesis based okay. so in canada if you want to do your phd you have to have a m a s c in background doing your masters you cannot be an m engineering and then you can do your phd so the people who are thinking of doing a phd uh, you have to do your theory based masc uh, and uh, people like uh, the other people who are want to do course based so course based is like in the end of the uh, two years that you do your master you have to submit a project that is a course based uh, masters of engineering it has three sub domains so you you can choose subjects if you want to specialize in uh, supply chain if you want to specialize in lean manufacturing and system analytics i mean in lean and if you want to specialize in operational research and theory so there are a set of subjects that you want to choose in your course of time uh, so that if you want to specialize or you can do your general like in you can choose from each and uh, oh there is one more fourth called reliability and maintenance so you can be a reliability and maintenance specialization also from industry engineering so it has courses from reliability and maintenance engineering yeah So, or you can be a general so though the the the, the degree is a course based uh, degree uh, can students choose based on their electives which stream they want to that's the yeah whole yeah that's the whole point okay. yeah for example you can choose i'm doing a general one mm-hmm. so i have ch- i have taken subjects from supply chain lean i have taken subjects from reliability and also in, in my coming course i'm taking subject from system analytics so that's general stream but if you want to have a specialization written on your uh, degree like lean system so you have a preset of subjects that you have to take to complete your lean special uh, specialization in masters or supply chain or rams or operation so that's how it works okay now taking on a on a like question since the university lies in montreal uh i know the university's uh, main medium of instruction is english but how do you find the life uh, overall living in a country in a, live in a place where they predominantly speak french uh, so yeah. just curious to know um, how do someone uh, from india mostly we know english but how do one has to uh, survive uh, in a place uh, people speak french so basically um <clears throat> it's a prob- it's not a problem yeah it's a hurdle to be I'll be very honest it's a hurdle but since canada being a bilingual state the use of french in montreal is predominant like it's good heavy um uh, in downtown when we go around you can bear with they can bear with english but since we lo- leave the island uh, if you don't know french it's going to be tough it sorry it has to be it has to be tough and it it's going to be tough for you to survive if you don't know french in uh, montreal So uh, yeah there are only two bilingual universities McGill and Concordia but um, French is important French is mandatory French is required to be in Montreal so for for example I have just completed my 9 months but I I can understand a bit of French I cannot speak that fluently but I am starting to learn that's a requirement in Montreal yeah for sure So, is any special course being offered in the university to help the students to um, uh, navigate uh, to yeah. transition between this language barrier? Uh, can you please tell us about this? Yeah. So, in uh, there is a department of French studies in Montreal in Concordia. They do provide uh, French classes, French talks, like peer review sessions, and many more things. Also, the government of Quebec gives you the the um, there are classes from the government sponsored. Um, there are government sponsored classes or centers where you can go and learn french and you can there are part time and full time courses available for you to learn french but yeah there are many resources available in uh, concordia for french so department of french studies give you a lot of uh, resources and tools to learn french okay great so uh, just would like to touch upon now um, um, uh, kind of a uh, serious question so from a many perspective what is the tuition fees and how do generally from your friend circle how do the students manage that amount uh the tuition fees as i told one of the very big uh, 
plus point of Concordia is it's not high. So it's around 35K Canadian dollars for my whole um, course uh, over two years. 35,000 Canadian dollars, which is less than what I know from the other yeah, benchmark uh, so university. Yeah. And uh, Montreal is a very uh, economical city as of now. In Toronto, you get a three and a half, like it, one bedroom hall kitchen apartment in 2000 plus, right? Yeah. In Montreal, you get in like 100, uh, you get in 1200. Oh, is it? Oh, great. Yeah. Wow. So, so it's, and it's this, so that's big thing. Um, in what else? Um, that's financially. Toronto has a crisis of, uh, right now, like part time and all those. It's, it's tough in GTA area, but in Montreal, there are jobs. The thing only is like, you need to know, understand a bit of French. That's the only thing. Right. But yeah, economically, people, my friends have been doing part time. We do part time and uh, internship and uh, many other jobs to you know support our tuition fees. But the tuition fee is roughly around thirty five thousand Canadian dollars. The the expense of living in Montreal, if you share an apartment with like generally what Indian guys and Indian students do, if you share an apartment, your overall uh, average budget uh, for the month should be around seven hundred to eight hundred Canadian dollars. Uh, like it includes the room and your food everything should be under i mean 800 to 900 max 900 canadian dollars you earn around 1100 canadian dollars uh while you do your part time uh, so that's basically two to three hundred dollars of saving every month uh, and um yeah that's that's pretty much it uh, montreal i i what i found is montreal is a very economical city as compared to different other cities in canada it's a it's economical cities. The, the the tuition fee is not that high in Cambodia, so that's good. Right, right. So that's great. Uh, the seven hundred to eight hundred dollars, which includes your like food ma- maximum nine hundred, maximum nine hundred if you're right. if you're sharing an apartment. So the maximum nine hundred of your right. groceries and your apartment both included. If I understand, health insurance would be covered in your tuition fees by yeah. the university. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's an it's in a mandatory health insurance that we have to take from Blue Cross. Right. Uh, that's covered in your tuition fees, and roughly it comes around. So thirty-five thousand is a uh, like estimate what you what you get. Probably to the pay. transport uh, passes also are included in your college. No, no, no. So transport passes you have to take like it's fifty-seven dollars per month oh, for buses and, and metro. Bus, bus, separately. <clears throat> bus and metro both included for the month. Right. Uh, uh, so, for example, to give you a break uh, breakdown, fifty dollars for your phone bill, fifty-seven dollars for your uh, transport. Um, almost uh, $400 if you live in downtown for your apartment mm. and $500 is max for the grocery. So you won't eat $500, but you have four, like top notch if you go out somewhere sometimes. So $500 for that. Right. So that's the overall economic, like financial breakdown. Mm. So uh, in terms of admission, uh, do you, um, uh, do you noti- notice that Concordia University specifically look for certain skills in candidates? How does the... Uh, is there any specific skills that is more valued in terms of admission for the Concordia University? I am not sure about it. I have I, in my class there are a mix of freshers' experience. Like people are uh, having experience of zero years to seven years also. Mm-hmm. I have someone who I have a friend who has eight years of experience. So it it all jots down to your how strong your SOP is, how strong your profile is, how strongly or how convincingly you have asked the university to give them admission, give, to give you admission in their program. So that's like make a very strong SOP, have a good LOR, have a good CV, and I think you should be good to go. Right, right. Great. So since you also mentioned about the part-time uh, jobs, uh, is there a more university on-campus jobs or generally students have to look for jobs outside Montreal? Can you please uh, tell us about the, both the on-campus and off-campus jobs? So on-campus, we have we do have jobs, That's but the thing, I will be very honest, Venkatesh, uh, on-campus job, for one job, we have 100 applicants, because obviously everyone wants to work on-campus. Mm-hmm. Uh, so on campus jobs are there, but there are also competition for them. Off campus jobs are plenty, plenty. I mean, if you wanna, uh, yeah, not. I mean, like it's it's good, good. You would get job for sure if you're looking for a job. Like in 15 days, you won't be jobless. There are tons of restaurants in Montreal downtown. There are tons of depending depending on the convenience store. So there are tons of uh, convenience stores. There are tons of there is Walmart and I mean, if you want a job, you can get job in Montreal Island. That's for sure. It's a very lively economic city for sure. Right. So you can work. Like I have worked in like like many places. Mm-hmm. Like I have been here from September 22 and I have worked like many places. So 
also I switched because I'm like, oh, sh- I should try this. I should try this. So that's the amount of job uh, security we have in Montreal. Right, right. Since this place, uh, spoke about the city, um, can you uh, please give us uh, some idea about the uh, city life as such? So as a university student, how do you experience the city life? Can you please oh, give us some idea? Je t'aime Montreal. If I would, if I would say in French, je t'aime Montreal. I love Montreal. It's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful city. It has a um, mix of both modern and classic vibe. It has diverse, diverse people, demography, diverse geography. So you have this beautiful, magnificent uh, Montreal in between, like the mountains. You have Verdun Beach. You have. Um, you have the beautiful saint laura uh, river basin the the food scene is here is epic you get cuisines from ranging from korean chinese lebanese uh, italian french indian pakistan bangladesh so you get a lot of cuisine students it's more of a student city you have hc montreal you have university of montreal you have university of sherbrooke concordia mckill you have udem so these there are many you have you come so these are the universities here so you have a lot of student uh, uh student population so it's a beautiful city it has like the summers are always something or somewhere happening in the city you have uh, the so right now this uh, weekend there was the oshiega music festival which which featured billy eilish kendra lamar so it's always lively it all it's always like you find something or something else to do in this city so that's the one reason it's uh, why i love montreal right right how about the campus life how does campus life is beautiful campus life is great um, they organize so there are many associations there are sports association there are music associations there are theater associations you know join anything uh, you can join but for masters to be very honest you don't have that much amount of liberty and time to you know go around and play and i mean you do have you can join something but it's more for the bachelors like sae and space concordia so space concordia is like one of the most famous space research oriented student club in whole of canada so there is music concordia theater concordia qr concordia like any everything so it depends on on your interest so i was the part of this university advancement team where i got to meet the stingers i mean the university hockey team the university rugby team we used we raised fund for them made calls to donors we met big big donors and so this was the part i was people my friends are in the student associations so they organize frosh events they organize outings halloween parties christmas parties so there's a lot to do in the campus if you want to do a lot you can do a lot great <laughs> So, um, how is the winter in Montreal? Montreal winter is pretty harsh. Yeah, it's harsh. I mean, it's not very easy. It's harsh, but uh, nothing stops. Right. How one should be prepared as they travel from a uh, tropical country like uh, India? Okay. So, just if you, just in case to let, let you know, don't carry any warm clothes from India. None of them works. Uh, you have to. You can carry thermals in a vest. but everything else you can get in here like the winter coats the down jacket the parkas as they say the winter boots the winter gloves the decathlon you can get there are many shops 0.0 north face you can get from those don't uh, unnecessarily have that much of luggage weight from india because those uh, cloths from india don't really restrain uh, the, the the harsh winters of montreal or canada as such right so uh, here um, you how about the job opportunities after completing the degree of this course the job opportunities are, are plenty right um, as i told you can be a process engineer you can be a continuous improvement engineer you can be a supply chain analyst you can be a, a logistics coordinator you can be a supply chain uh, coordinator you can be a project engineer reliability engineer uh, maintenance engineer you can be a data scientist you can be a data analyst because we do read about data also so they need data scientist and data analyst in fmcg or inventory control management or in the you know more in the logistics area you you have jobs in all those these domains you can be a program analyst you can be a project analyst uh, these are the, the the opportunities are are ample because industrial engineering is very generic it it doesn't restrain you from working in only one industry you can be working in mining you can be working in um, steel you can be working in aviation in 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 uh, locomotives i mean uh, rolling stock trains you can be working in automotive because everyone needs industrial engineering right everyone needs continuous uh, improvement uh, 
analyst everyone needs supply chain analyst everyone has to have project and process planners schedulers so, so right. these are the amount of job opportunities you can right. have so i know that you told uh, mentioned about uh, your internship and uh, how does this internship process works is there any specific semester that one student has to be prepared to apply and how does the internship co-op team in university help students in finding such internship Yep. Yeah. So there is an institute of co-op education at Concordia, which helps you, you know, uh, right from making your CV to help you preparing for interviews to apply. So there's a specific portal from where you apply called uh, I don't remember the name because I was not a co-op student. Uh, so you have to apply for. I mean, you have to check it while you are filling up the form. You have to check in that you want to be a co-op. student so they'll help you making resumes and there is a whole lot of you know training sessions and then you help you apply outside i applied from outside like on the website of pradenity so there from there i got a, a call for the interview and then that's how i got this interview but internship interview. is a part mandatory part of this particular course based program no no no, okay. no it's not a mandatory part you have your summer off so basically okay. that's fine and it will be a paid internship for sure yeah yeah right and since it is a two year program i assume the post graduation work permit is given for three years is three years right. yeah it's a dli it's a designated learning institute concordia university is a dli so you don't have to worry about um, uh, like you won't get your three years pgwp you would get your three years pgwp um uh, there is a new rule in quebec where you cannot complete your uh, engineering masters before 2 years so you have to do it for 2 years earlier they used to be that people used to take 2 to 3 three subjects in summers and yeah. complete it in one year half yeah. years but now there is a mandatory uh, law just in quebec mm-hmm. uh, that you cannot complete so they have restricted the amount of credits you can take in per semester mm-hmm. minimum amount so that's nice so that makes it complete for 2 years for sure like dot 2 years you have to complete you would be able to complete at minimum 2 years at maximum 6 years mm. and then you get a 3 year uh, post graduate work permit okay great you have shared a lot of valuable information uh, dhananjay is there anything specific you would like to share with the viewers um just a very small uh, suggestion if you are thinking of coming to canada just ask a few questions to yourself like why do you want to come uh what do you want to do in the next 5 years and how do you want to see yourself in the next coming years like if you want to just come to leave the country think about it if you want to grow in your domain you want to be have global outreach have global exposure you know understand the market or business more you want to upskill yourself that's a good reason or there are many reasons that people think uh why to come just ask these three questions why what and i mean why do I want to I want to come to canada and uh, what's my aim of being in canada and how do i see myself in like 5 10 years working from here or i mean anything so that's the basic uh, suggestion i would give and um, just be fearless and apply great great i have like to ask one follow up question what sort of transformations do you feel after joining concordia mm, oh okay uh, concordia has made me a, uh, obviously has made me a very better Uh, detail oriented person i used to be a, i mean i used to be a very passionately driven professional but detail orientation was what something something i learned from concordia also i have pushed my boundary in terms of you know maximizing my hours of productivity uh that's how i w- i used to do part time and i used to study full time so that's how i pushed myself or oh, and also used to look after like that that's every international student like every other international student does in canada so that's how i pushed my productivity hours um that has changed a lot i made a i made wonderful friends in canada i mean wonderful friends at concordia uh and had a wonderful mentors and currently also have a wonderful mentor so uh, that's something i uh, have learned and i have achieved and i have i'm grateful for after joining concordia in montreal right right so um, as you submitted your student visa uh, when you got your offer letter uh, i'm just curious since the entry tuition fees itself is $35000 how much were you asked to make an initial deposit for confirming the admit so that's the lowest i have ever found it's $100 Okay, that's why I was. Usually, students used to say they submit deposited like thirty thousand. So, Win- of University of Windsor asks you about four thousand dollars, right? Okay. Uh, university, uh, other universities ask you two thousand plus, but Concordia is very legit. They ask only for hundred dollars. Hundred dollars, and also 
just to just to confirm your seat and that too they give you a lot of time like for example if you want to come in september they'll give you in time till april mm-hmm. like april was the deadline when i had to just give 100 dollars okay 100 or 200 200 i guess sorry 200 100 was the application okay. 200 okay. uh 200 dollars to confirm right and that's adjusted obviously right it's about to ask so during your student visa process um was there any specific um, way of showing your financial um, proof like since only 200 dollars was expected for the deposit i'm just curious to know what from the visa side were they expecting so the visa what i submitted was like i submitted my um, so I, but they were asking for 200 but i, I did submit uh, i mean a couple of thousand bucks uh, in there so i showed the fee receipt i showed my bank statements i showed my fds and everything the normal visa documents that you show to prove your financial stability like fds the bank statements the insurance so that you have a corpus of like 35000 to be able to pay that's what i showed right great thanks a lot dananjay so viewers no this is the experience that dananjay uh, has taken so and i will always uh, say please do your thorough research do your research on the university the application of a visa process uh, never there are a lot of news that people were being fooled by some agents um, applying for visa it's always advisable to process your visa by yourself uh, as you are traveling from one country to another country it's always good to do your research and make the decisions and um, this is just a the guideline on how uh, an experience um, uh, and a career opportunities lies ahead and uh, thanks a lot for watching the video thank you